two days left. It's all we have to make the most of the rest of our Amazon journey. It is yet another amazing and immaculate Jingu sunrise. This is our opportunity to really switch things up. Last night we got a bit of a taste of a uh, style of fishing that I really want to do. Oh well, I'm gonna go TT real quick. Probably a good time to get bed, honestly. I'm trying to put you in the worst mood, huh? Oh, I got bet. I'm getting bet right now. No way, I'm getting bet. Killed. I have my pants down, I'm getting bet. I got a bite while peeing. Yes, I got a huge bite. I am not even kidding. Let me get my wiener in. He's still on. Got him, got him, got him. Let's go, baby. Oh, it's big. It's big, whatever it is. Oh, it's a big one, dude. It's a good fish. It's a good fish. No way, dude. Wiener out, let's go. Oh my gosh, no way. We're hooked up. We are hooked up. I have no idea what it is. It's definitely a big cat. I was literally taking a pee and a freaking catfish bit my line. Ooh, I don't know what this is. It's so dark, I can't even tell. <sighs> he might've came off. No, he's right there. He's right there. Oh, it's a little red tail. No way. No way. <laughs> Holy sh Thanks, man. Oh, I was peeing and he bit. <laughs> oh, sick, man. My first ever red tail catfish. Incredible. Wow, dude, they pull really hard. Oh yeah, literally. Oh, here we go. Let's go. This here is a red tail catfish. This is a small example. They get much bigger than this. Uh, over a hundred pounds, believe it or not. They are very much sought after for, well, you probably guessed it, their beauty, but they pull very hard. And if you're into catfish, this is probably one of the coolest ones. Um, these are actually very popular fish in the aquarium trade, and they are native to the Xingu River. Look at the barbels on the front of that fish. They use that to feel around at night, feeling vibration so they can hunt in the dark. I was literally going for a pee when that fish bit. A new species and definitely a, a lifelong goal completed to catch one of these creatures. Again, not the size we're hunting for. We're gonna continue chasing these guys, but a good start. We'll send our little red tail back. Hopefully we can come back here in a couple years and he'll be hundred pounds. The current's going this way, so we're gonna let him swim out of the, out into the current. Come on, buddy, you got this. They're very hardy creatures. Catfish in the Amazon are built for survival, that's for sure. There she goes. <laughs> so cool. I don't know if you guys noticed. I mean, you guys have probably heard that fish too croaking and, and, and making that noise. I'm not really sure why. I probably should have done some research before coming to the Amazon. But if you know why those catfish or catfish in general croak or make that noise, drop a comment below. We stuck it out. We uh, prevailed through the piranhas and um, it was all worth it. I'm, I'm hoping that we can upgrade size wise. But hey, we got it done. Our first catfish here in the Amazon. It's one of the main selling points of this trip, and that is chasing after the famous and the most notorious three giants of the Jinga River. I guess the Amazon in general. You've got red tail catfish, you've got the sorbi, and you've also got the paraiba. Along with those three, you also have the zhao, which uh, is capable of reaching sizes over 100 pounds, which is bigger than a small child. It's crazy to put it in that perspective. But really the, the tough part about this style of catfishing that we've learned over the past couple of days is that there's a very small window for us to make it happen. In other words, we can't fish for them all day. We have a morning session where we're able to be in a good spot, in a good situation where we can hook up. And then we've also got an evening session. In all, each day we probably have a good four hours at the most to make this happen. Right now we're hopping in the boat and we're gonna see if we can grab some bait for today's river monster mission, but just know, that right now we are after one bite and one bite only, and that is a giant Jingu catfish. Nothing 
put like some morning FGs. One of the best ways to get bait in the Amazon is to work your way up the food chain. Start with something small. This is a little tiny knife fish. It is the bait of choice I've been using here in the Jingu for the past four, three, four days. And uh, we're gonna use this to catch something a little bit bigger. And then we're gonna use that fish that we catch on the knife fish to catch something even bigger. So, see you later little buddy. Take care. Watch this. Oh, I've got one. Nope, just kidding. Yeah, same, just kidding. And I just ripped it right off as I rolled it. Oh. Oh. oh, it's a giant. Is it? No, it's a little guy. You know, it's a pyar on their head, but we've been catching quite a few of these, and we're on a meat mission today. We are simply out here for the sole purpose of getting meat. Oh, that's a long one. <laughs> the main objective is to get as much bait as we possibly can before we head on over to the catfish hole. Which means that uh, not only are we fishing for fun, but we're basically fishing for our next mission. Oh, he's got it. He had it the whole time. That'll be bait. He just was ha he had it, was holding it. Come on, please. We need this for catfish. <laughs> we got him. There we go. That is bait. If you come to the Amazon and you want to catch payara, they are a fun fish to catch. They hammer the lure or the bait. They take some pretty long runs. They do jump, but they will frustrate you. They just don't have a whole lot of skin on their mouths, as you can probably tell. If you guys watched some of the previous episodes, you know that these guys are crazy fish, and uh, they get their notoriety for their mouth. Look at those killer teeth. They use these giant teeth to pierce their prey, injure them, and then they come back for the kill. It's also one of the reasons why they're so hard to hook because they'll strike it with some serious velocity, but they won't actually eat it. They'll follow up with a, a second attack, and that's when they actually eat the bait. This guy, not going to make it. He's going to be our, our filet mignon for our big Amazonian kitty. Poor guy. Well, at least he'll serve a purpose. Spot, spot. <laughs> Here. Get him in the net. Get him in the net. Get him in the net. Ah! Let's go! Boga. Nice one. That is a beautiful catch. A very uncommon fish to uh, to find here in the Amazon. This right here is the native stick fish. Absolutely gorgeous. We don't want we don't want to keep him. What's that? Tree Aiba. <laughs> we don't want to keep him out of the water too long. I'm gonna send him back. What a beauty. <laughs> oh. Oh. That's something weird. Yeah, good fish. Good fish. Catfish, I think. I think it's a catfish. Ooh. Oh. That was something big. Jow. Well, I just caught uh, a little tiny Corvina, which is basically like a, a croaker. It looks just like a croaker, same family. And uh, we're gonna use this guy whole for Paraiba. Look at that. <laughs> Unreal. Big fish has got to eat this. We are not fishing for little ones, that is for sure. unknown species of payara. We haven't caught one this year, but it is crazy long. And also a sewer bee or a tiger shovel nose catfish. Again, one of our main targets this trip. But this guy is supposed to be bait for this. And when the catfish is smaller than the payara, it's not necessarily the one we're looking for. With that being said, it's still really cool to have in it. I mean, absolutely crazy looking double up. Wow. Unsuccessful. 
of our big catfish. We did get some crazy species though, and we do now have baits. So that's the important part. Catfishing is not as fluent out here as a lot of the videos out there make, make it seem. I know you guys probably think like, oh, you just go out there and soak a bait for however long and you're gonna get a big catfish, but they're, uh, they're a lot more challenging than that. You know? um, and you've also got other variables too, like, like I mentioned, piranhas, bite window, and everything else. But we're gonna go try something new and uh, explore some fresh waters. Let's go. Good morning, or I guess I should say good midday. Just woke up from a fat nap. We feasted after our somewhat successful slash unsuccessful catfishing mission. Um, you got a sorby. Yep, so did Zisco. So did Zisco. They, uh, the right species, just not the right size. I don't want to be a a chooser because we are beggars, but we're getting things planned and situated here. We're looking at most of the day's fishing taking place in the dark, which is really when these fish tend to feed. It's looking like Arby's in this boat. We got ourselves some meat. Our bait mission was successful, and in the process, we ended up catching the second biggest tri euro, at least my second biggest tri euro of the trip. It was 18 pounder on a live knife fish. It's crazy, but we did manage to keep one small stunted fish, uh, small, relatively speaking, and we're gonna soak this now for the target species, that being big cats. Wow, these piranhas are big. Commencing the catfish spread. As you can see, the sun is starting to fade. The night is beginning to overcome the jungle. Piranhas have stopped biting, and the catfish should be on the prowl. It's, uh, it's a grind out here, man. The Xingu is, uh, it's tough. You'd think, you know, being in a remote spot like this, it would be one of those things where it's instant, but you have to earn a, a bite out here. Uh, I will say there are fish that are much easier to catch than others, but catfish is not one of them. Scott uh, earlier did hook up to something really big, of course, on his smaller setup. The gear that we really want to catch these fish on is something like this, 6,000 size reel with heavy uh, catfish gar equipment, but uh, he hooked into what the guides believe to be a little paraiba, which is one of the bigger species in this river. Um, I also want to turn on the camera too, just to kind of shed some light on this fishery and how this works. I think a lot of people have the misconception that you can just drop down into a specific part of Brazil or Bolivia or Guyana or you know Peru, wherever that may be in the Amazon, and just start fishing. But the only reason why we're here right now is is through the outfitter that set this up. The people that run this outfitter, uh, Ian and Mega, had to fly here and basically persuade and communicate and create a relationship with the existing tribes that are here on the river. Otherwise, you, you're not allowed to fish here. Like myself, I couldn't just pull up to the spot and fish. That wouldn't go very well. So we have access to this section of the river, but not other sections because there's other tribes that basically um, have domain over that and control that and, and have the say in who gets to make a cast in that water. I don't know if you guys find that interesting, but I did. So I thought I'd share it with you guys. Plus, there's nothing else better to do while we wait for catfish. So I thought I'd chatter in front of the camera for a bit. Um, it's cool. I very much, I think I've said this before, but I very much recommend experience this. If you love fishing, if you if you are comfortable being in an uncomfortable setting, then pull the trigger on a, on a trip like this because it is, you know, in many ways life-changing. Um, I remember my first trip down to the Amazon. It, it was incredible. I, I've, I've been here not three times now, and I will continue to come back until I die. So, okay. I'm going to step off the soapbox. Let's wait for uh, one of these drags to start peeling and push this luck. It's gonna happen. Oh my gosh, you look dead. <laughs> we still have another probably two and a half hours. It's gonna hours. happen tonight, tomorrow morning, and the next night. And if it doesn't, it's not meant to. We need that rod and those two rods to go off.
It feels like it was just moments ago that I was sitting on this boat, holding this camera, saying, welcome to the Amazon, it's day number one. And here we are, the final day. This trip has flown by. And I'm sad to say that this is our last opportunity to really enjoy this beautiful river, this amazing scenery, and this impeccable fishery overall. This morning, we're getting started off on the right foot. Yesterday, we got so much bait that we didn't even need to get any this morning. So rather than chasing after some payar or wolf fish and using that as bait, we already are locked and loaded, have catfish rods out. We've got one, two, three, four, maybe five rods. The boys are fishing right next to us. We've got quite the catfish spread going at the moment. And uh, this is kind of our last ditch effort at getting a, you know, a sizable fish right now. I mean, I'm at the point where I just want like a 40 pound surabi or maybe a red tail catfish, or if we get really lucky, a paraiba, which is the king of this river. Um, I don't know, it's, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be a grind like it was yesterday, but all it takes is one single moment. It just takes one little cat to come up to our line, sniff that dead bait and take it. So again, like I always say, fingers crossed, wish us luck. Final day here on the Shingu River. Let's make it happen. Two spots in, no love. Oh, I lost my weight, how the hell did that happen? It's not good. Well, sun's getting higher and with the sun getting higher, our window slowly begins to close. No take on live bait, no take on dead bait. Where are these catfish? We're running out of time in the first half of our catfishing day. Oh, oh, <laughs> that was so sick. Just when I thought it was over. I think it's a Bakuda. I don't know what it is, but it's aggressive. Yeah, Bakuda. No. What is it? What is it? Oh. Okay. What is it? Matrisha. What? I, uh, I don't know what the name of this fish is. They, they just said it, but I'm having a hard time pronouncing it. Very crazy. Just when we thought we were done catching new fish on our final day, we've unlocked yet another creature this thing's got teeth almost reminds me of um uh, like paku teeth not quite human like but very similar crazy looking fish one more time what what is it okay okay matrisha matrisha i don't know uh, what family this fish lies in but it had a tail very similar to a a, a payara and i thought it was a payara at first and it also, it also ate a topwater too very cool. I got that Amazon uh, species book, so we'll go back and take a look at the uh, scientific and common name for these guys. So cool though. <laughs> we may not be able to get a catfish today, or tonight I should say, but at least we have this amazing creature. You gotta appreciate all the fish, whether they be big, small, little, um, or medium. In this case, medium. Let's send them back. See, send them back. Or bait. Yeah. Fish on. Yeah. I just got hit. I'm, I'm bit, I'm bit, I'm bit, I'm bit, I'm bit. Good to light up. Very bit. Ready? Yep. Got him, got him, got him. Whatever it is, I got it. Oh, it feels good. Oh, it's going absolutely insane. Get him up out of the trees. Uh, I'm on, baby. We have a catfish. I don't know how big it is, but it feels good. Final night. Oh, that just blinded me. Oh my gosh. Ah. Come here, bud. Come here. Come here. I have no idea what it is. Oh my gosh. Finally. Finally. Wow, he tried to bring me right to the trees. Oh, come here. Feels good. It's not giant, but it feels good. It was also a really heavy rod. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Red tail. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Woo! These little ones fight hard. <laughs> These little ones fight so hard. Ah, let's go. Pirarara. Pirarara. <laughs> 
Oh, don't lose him. Obrigado. We did it. The fish we've been after. <laughs> Look what he did to all that line. Oh. Oh. Did he break some? Cisco. Is that it? Acting how about in? No way, dude. We have your. Bit. We have your line. See, <laughs> we have your leader in line. It's the same fish that broke you off. Unreal. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's actually two leaders hanging out of this fish right now. One of which is uh, Cisco's setup. It's his leader that he broke off on a couple of minutes ago. That fish is hungry. He bit my lure. He bit Cisco's lure, broke him off, and then went over to mine. And we managed to land him. Oh, we got him. This is the coolest freaking catfish on earth, in my opinion. Listen to him. He's talking to us. He's mad. He's like, damn it. You guys got me. This is actually great because if I didn't catch this fish, then he would have lived his entire life with Zisco's hook in him. And uh, not only did we get a catfish on our final day here in the Amazon, but we also got to save this guy's life. These red tails look so much different from what I'm used to seeing. They're almost golden, almost yellow. Um, and in case you're wanting to, they are very hardy fish. This fish is totally good out of water currently. We're gonna get a couple shots of them and send them back. We may not be able to get that absolute giant 80 to 100 pound pirarara today, but this is still such an awesome fish. Got hard heads, big tails, very powerful. That was an eight foot six musky rod that I hooked that fish on and he absolutely kicked my ass. <sighs> I love the Jingu. This has been such a truly magical experience and uh, I'll never forget it. This may be our last fish of the trip, so I'm gonna give him a nice little kiss, get some shots, and send them back. Mwah, I love you too. <laughs> For the most magical moment of our trip, the release of our final Jingu fish. Wow, it looks so amazing in that green water. Maybe one day we'll get a giant, but for now, this is a good start. Bye bye. See you later, buddy. One more bite would be sick, but I'm, I'm gonna call it here a little bit if we don't get it. Oh, sh Holy f dude. This thing is humming. This thing is humming. That's a big fish. That's a big fish. That's a big fish. No! No. No. See? <sighs> I'll get your heart pumping. That was insane, dude. I thought the night was over. Let's your light again. Just briefly, just shine it down on the floor. Just need to make sure it's still a bait. Yeah, I'm good. Oh. I'm bet. I'm bet. I'm bet. It's little, whatever it is, but I'm bet. Let him take it. I'm definitely bet. Don't think it's large. He's moving pretty good. It's a good fish. It's a good fish. This is a good fish. Oh, I'm running a line. I'm running a line, boys. I'm running a line, boys. It's a good fish. It's a good fish. Kilp, you might need to reel that line up for me. GK, Rod. Oh, it's big. It's big. It's big. This thing's kicking my ass. It's kicking my ass. Brigado. Oh, big cat fish on the line. Big cat fish on the line. This is way bigger than I thought. On the musky rod. Oh.
I have no idea how big this is. Feels really good. There it is. What is it? Gariba? No. That's little. It's not huge, but it's decent. Jau? No. Pirarara. Oh, it's a good pirarara. Holy sh boys. We got a good one. Good pirarara. Woo! Woo! Pirarara, big one. Uh, this is the fish we want. Oh my gosh. These fish are all power. I cannot believe how strong these pirarara are. It's a good fish. This is my biggest ever Amazon catfish. Cannot lose this thing. Oh. Okay, come here, buddy. <laughs> this is unbelievable. It's an eight foot six musky rod. And this thing is kicking my ass. Can you see a light on the fish? Oh, it's a good one. It's a good fish. Wow, what a species. Listen to that drag go. 300 size casting reel, 80 pound braid, straight steel leader. And this thing is beating me up. What a way to end the trip. Hopefully we can get this thing landed. It's a beautiful fish. Beautiful in size and color. And also power. Oh, come on, man. God, these things are insane. Woo! Come on, baby. I'm gonna bring her up. Oh my gosh, dude, this thing is so sick. It's the fish I've been after, man. This is the fish you've been after. This thing kicked my ass, bro. Uh -huh. Absolutely kicked my ass. Oh my gosh. Unreal. Woo. Oh, come on. Hard work pays, man. Final day. He's got eight there. <laughs> Let's go. No way. Bring him in. Yeah, <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. boys. Let's go. Way to go. Obrigado. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's cool. <laughs> Holy <laughs> We got her. Caleb, <laughs> put her there. Mm -hmm. Our final day. Our final day, our final day, we got the fish of my dreams. The fish have been after for three days straight. <laughs> this right here is a true red tail catfish. A couple nights earlier, we caught a little example of this big beast, and uh, I was hungry for more. Just that little fish absolutely dominated my setup, and it really put my fishing skills to the test. But you know, through our amazing guides that we have, and you know, just through this amazing fishery, we were able to pull out an absolutely miraculous late night catch on our final day here on the Jingu. This place is magical. I've always, always wanted to catch a red tail, and especially red tail of this caliber. Could not have been possible without an amazing team. And uh, of course, Caleb, who's documented the whole thing as well. These things are amazing. They're worth all the freaking hype. <sighs> wow, unbelievable. Look at their, look at their mouths. You're gonna run. On my knee. Just deadlift and one more. Time. I got. I, oh, look. Is that Kandaru? Is that Kit? Kandaru. No. F I'm out of his gill. Uh, uh, Maybe. Kandaru? Kandaru? Kandaru. Kandaru. Holy yeah. shit. See? I'm out of his yeah. gill. <laughs> no way. Now I feel really no f way. Dude. Holy. That's the. Uh, also, that, this is a two for one catch. That is the famous Kandaru. That is. Uh, depicted swimming up people's pee holes <laughs> this thing was in its gill Not holy sh <laughs> boys all around we did it i was about to call it too i was like ah let's give it 20 more minutes and get kind of hungry wow the coolest fish 
I think we were caught, period. And I've said that so many times this trip. I said it about the wolffish, I said it about the electric eel, and now I'm saying about the catfish of my dreams. Look at that beast. Right now we are reviving this fish. Whenever you're reviving a fish in the river, you always want to make sure the head is current first. Um, that water really shouldn't be going backwards to the gills. This fish beat me up, and in some ways I also beat this fish up too. So it's important that we both sit here and take the time to revive. When I feel ready and she feels ready, she'll let me know, she'll kick, and she'll leave. <laughs> they make the little noises too. They're honestly the most adorable river monsters I've ever seen. 100%. They're not creepy. They're not they're creepy. They're so cute. And, and, and it's really weird too. I don't know if it's the genetics in this river, but these particular red tails are very, very golden and very yellow, making them even more unique than they already are. She's wiped though. It's just, this is a good thing we're doing this. Is that okay? Okay. There she goes. Woo! Obrigado. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Put the, about this the thing. glove on and put it back on your on the glove. I gotta touch it. Look at that. Oh. So this oh, is crazy. Hang on, hang on. Look. Yeah, look at that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Did you try, try to bite me? So this is the infamous Kanduru. It uh, was featured in a in a River Monsters episode. Uh, the myth goes that these little things, which by the way, the myth goes that these little gill parasites um, have been reported to swim up the urethra of a human male. Um, we did a lot of research the other day because Scott actually happened to take a piss in the river. And uh, as soon as I did, I realized what I had done and I had a full on panic. <laughs> but did attack. you think that they would actually, so where Scott took a piss from where I just caught that catfish was maybe a half a mile? Not dude, a couple hundred yards. <laughs> so there, there may or may not have been actual reports of this happening, but basically to sum it up, it's very rare and almost impossible, but that is the kanduru. Um, it was in the gill of our uh, red tail catfish. And luckily not inside Martinez. And luckily not inside Scott's wiener. Yeah. Should we release him? No. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Stay out of my dick! <laughs> Show him the kanduru. Yeah, I will. <laughs> leaving planes have touched down here in the village and we're bidding farewell one group leaves another one gets ready for some amazing fishing I actually just met a viewer crazy enough who lives in Brazil chatted up I chatted him up for a bit he asked about the fish and I told him it was so they should have a good time but bittersweet moment we ended on a high note but I don't want to leave I want to stay for another week but Scott and I have uh, got bigger plans ahead of us good time man good trip. Cisco Awesome. So much fun. Hopefully we get a chance to do it again too. Soon, you know? Maybe go back to South America. I don't know when we'll get a chance, but it'd be nice if we plan another trip soon. Hopefully soon. Maybe in the near future. I don't know, dude. I'll have to look at my schedule. Oh, 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 there we go. We are bit. We are bit. There we go. There we go. We are on. Oh, oh my god!